Good afternoon. We welcome you to another Lenten meditation as we follow our Savior in his final steps. This afternoon in worship to learn Jesus' final steps led him to a garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. We begin our afternoon Lenten meditation with our hymn, Rise My Soul to Watch and Pray, as is printed on page three. You may stand. We are, have gathered this afternoon in worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in the confession and absolution. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us, that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. We join in the responsive reading of Psalm, Psalm 31a. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. 
My life is consumed by anguish. And my years are broken. My strength fails because of my affliction. And my bones are weak. My times are in your hands. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in the right name of God. We offer the psalm prayer. Lord, we are in constant danger of being felled by the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh, but you provided your only begotten Son to be our righteousness. Drive us to flee to him for refuge whenever our enemies threaten, for he alone is our rock and our fortress. In his name we ask it. Amen. You may be seated for the Passion History. This evening we hear the second portion of our Savior's Passion History in the upper room and also in the Garden of Gethsemane. While they were reclining and eating, Jesus said, Amen, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread with me in the dish. Indeed, the Son of Man is going to go just as it has been written about him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Amen, amen, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples were looking at each other uncertain which of them he meant. One of his disciples, the one Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. Simon Peter motioned to him to find out which one Jesus was talking about. So leaning back against Jesus' side, he asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus replied, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread after I have dipped it in the dish. Then he dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do more quickly. None of those reclining at the table understood why Jesus said this to him. Because Judas kept the money box, some thought that Jesus was telling him, buy what you need for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. After Judas left, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. While they were eating on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples. He said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Dear children, I'm going to be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus replied, will you really lay down your life for me? Simon, Simon, pay attention. Satan has asked to have you all so that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brothers. Peter answered him, Even if all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Amen, I tell you, tonight, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the disciples said the same. He said to them, When I sent you out without money bag, traveler's bag, and sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they said. Then he told them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a traveler's bag. And let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. 
For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. He was counted with the transgressors. Indeed, what is written about me is going to have its fulfillment. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He said to them, that is enough. And Jesus said to them, this night you will all fall away in account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. After they sang a hymn, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to the Mount of Olives, where there was a garden called Gethsemane. He and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who was betraying him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. When he reached the place, Jesus told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. Keep praying that you may not enter into temptation. Then he took Peter, James, and John along with him and began to be troubled and distressed. He said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow, even to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. When he rose from prayer, he went to the disciples and found them sleeping as a result of sorrow. He said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Were you not strong enough to keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass from me unless I drink it, may your will be done. Again he returned and found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what they should answer him. He left them again, went away, and prayed a third time. He said the same words as before. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. As he was in agony, he prayed more fervently. His sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let's, let us go. Look, my betrayer is near. Here ends this afternoon's Passion History. All we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his wounds we are healed. Let us join in our next hymn, hymn 429, Go to Dark Gethsemane, hymn 425, as is printed on page 5.
He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Amen. The word of God for our Lenten meditation this afternoon as we focus on Jesus' final steps that led him to a garden is recorded in the 26th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. We read verses 36 to 46. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went a little farther, fell on his face and prayed. He said, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, So you were not able to stay awake with me for one hour? Watch and pray, so that you will not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass from me unless I drink it, may your will be done. Again, he returned and found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. He left them again, went away, and prayed a third time. He said the same words as before. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Look, my betrayer is near. This is the word of the Lord, and let us pray. Dear Lord, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear fellow followers of our suffering Savior in his final steps, this afternoon the scripture transports us as we trace the final steps of our Savior in his passion history to a garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus, as we heard in our Passion History of a moment ago, had just finished wonderful service to his disciples washing their feet and then commemorating a supper for them to remember his sacrifice and his death. And now he leads his little band of followers out to a familiar place, to a garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. May the Holy Spirit direct our minds and hearts as we follow Jesus in his final steps that led to a garden. And in this garden, we will see Jesus isolated and alone in his conflict of his soul. In this garden, we will see Jesus and witness him in the depth of his suffering of his soul. And then in this garden of prayer, we will also see an example for our own prayer life. Jesus often went to the Garden of Gethsemane outside of Jerusalem in the Mount of Olives with his disciples. It was a quiet place, a restful place that he enjoyed with his disciples. But not now. This was a place of conflict for Jesus, a conflict for his soul. He took with him his disciples to this garden and then he took his inner circle of disciples that were with him on that beautiful mountain of transfiguration, Peter, James, and John, and went a little farther. And then he went and he prayed. The disciples fell asleep. Many times we hear in the gospel lessons that Jesus enjoyed being alone in this meditation with his heavenly Father in prayer and in meditation. But not this time. Jesus yearned for company because there were awful things on the horizon for the Son of God and the Son of Man, and he wanted some company, even the company of his own weak disciples who were sleeping. But the isolation that Jesus felt was not so much that he wanted sympathy for what he was experiencing as he was isolated and felt alone in the burden that he would bear and only he could bear as the Son of God for the sins of the world. 
But in truth, Jesus was not totally alone. His heavenly Father was with him. And as the other gospel writers record for us, the heavenly Father sent angel to attend him and to strengthen him. And so in his isolation, Jesus prays to his heavenly Father, Father, if it is your will, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. As we trace the steps of Jesus, his final steps that lead us to a garden in this Lenten afternoon, we can't help but also notice the weakness of the disciples sleeping when they should have been watching and praying. It reminds us how listening to the word of the Lord in worship requires preparation, it requires concentration, it requires being attentive. And as we are led in spirit to this garden, we also realize that the Garden of Gethsemane was a place of rest and quiet for Jesus and for his disciples. We thank the Lord that God gives us, his children, a house of rest for our souls. In the midst of the busyness of life and the anxieties that we feel, we can come to the house of the Lord, our garden, so to speak, and find rest for our souls in the peace of forgiveness that is ours in Jesus Christ. As we trace Jesus' steps, that, his final steps that led him to a garden, we see also that this is a garden, a place of intense sorrow for Jesus' soul. Again, we hear the words of Jesus. My soul is very sorrowful even to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Jesus' appearance, his actions, his word show that he was in the depth of sorrow. But what would cause such a great depth of sorrow? It was worse than death itself. It was the knowledge that Jesus Christ would bear in his body and in his soul, the very burden of the world's sin, every sinner, every sin of all time, and that he would feel the very anger of his heavenly Father against the world's sins, that he would experience hell itself as he would cry out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was alone in this suffering. And he prays that if it is the Lord's will, this cup would pass from him. This cup of suffering that was presented before the Son of God and the Son of Man. A cup, so to speak, mixed with all the consequences and the punishment for sin of all people of all time. And so he prays in the depth of his sorrow with sweat that is drop, dripping and dropping like blood to the ground that the cup would pass from him. And finally he prays, not my will, but yours be done, O Lord. It is good for us to be in this garden through the word of Scripture in this afternoon for if by the Holy Spirit through this word of Scripture we see the severity of our sins which cause Jesus to sorrow and we see our need for the Savior, then by the Holy Spirit through the word of God may he also enlighten us to see the meaning of Jesus' suffering for us and for the world so that our hearts are filled with love and gratitude for our Lord Jesus Christ. He prayed for us. He was sorrowful for us. He suffered for us, not for himself. There is a deep connection between this place of the garden to which Jesus' final steps led him, between his sorrowful suffering and our salvation between the pouring of his sweat like drops of blood to the ground and the peace that is ours through the blood that he shed on the cross. 
As we trace Jesus' final steps that lead him to this garden, we find also that it is a garden of prayer for the man of prayer. Jesus was praying that the cup be removed from him if it was the Lord's will. But finally he prayed that the Lord's will be done. Three times Matthew records for us that he returned in prayer to his heavenly Father saying the same words. But the Father verbally was silent in his answer. Jesus was alone in the depth of his suffering. But yet he promises us that I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus felt sorrow and was troubled in his soul, but he is there to comfort us in all of our troubles. We come to this garden through the word of Scripture in this afternoon, and we see it also as a garden of prayer that is a model and example for our prayer life. Have you ever seen the picture, the portrait of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane? There's a better portrait and picture than that. It is the picture of Jesus' perseverance, his determination to follow the will of his heavenly Father. When we pray, may it also be our prayer, not my will, but your will be done, O Lord. Jesus prayed consistently time after time in this garden to which his final steps led him. Without an answer, a verbal answer from his heavenly Father, he continued in persistence. How often does it happen in our weakness that we pray once for something and as soon as the amen is out of our mouth and we don't hear an answer, we might give up. Pray continuously. Pray confidently. Be confident as God promises. He will hear your prayer and he will answer it according to his will and as he deems is best. There is a victory of sorts in this garden of Gethsemane. Jesus prayed finally that his Father's will be done. Some may say that there's no victory here because Jesus' prayer wasn't answered, that the cup be taken from him. But in the end, he prayed that his Father's will was done. And his will was now in line with his Father's will. Knowing that his Father's will would, that he, would be that his final steps would trace him to the cross of Calvary and then finally to the victory of the empty tomb, he resolutely made the path with final steps to the cross. And he made that for the fruit and the benefit of your rescue from eternal death and from the guilt of your sins. We have gone in this Lenten afternoon with Jesus in his final steps to a garden. But what is the Garden of Gethsemane to you? Does it mean to you that it's a place where Jesus was sorrowful even to the point of death, that he might rescue you from your sins and from eternal death? Or is it just another insignificant garden outside of Jerusalem that a historical event took place? May this garden to which Jesus made his final steps be for you, the place where Jesus suffered for you and gained victory for you and for all. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You are reminded that there are care cards which you may sign and uh, leave perhaps in the offering and also the offering plate uh, is in the lobby area uh, to show your thanksgiving and offerings to the Lord.
You may stand for the responsive prayer of the church to be followed by the Lord's Prayer and Blessing. Pages six and seven of your worship folder. We pray responsively. Gracious Lord, according to your will and promise, you planned his path to the cross. He confronted the blindness of unbelief, the confusion of doubt, and the hurt of death. As we hear and contemplate the holy record of our Savior's passion and death, humble us as we view the Savior in his humility. In his suffering, show us our healing. And in his death, show us our life. We bring these requests to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. And you may be seated for our closing hymn, Now the Day is Over, page 7. In the name of Christ, our victorious Savior, good afternoon. It is our prayer that the word of God we have shared together following Jesus in his final steps that led to a garden enriches our faith in our suffering Savior and in his victory of his cross. 
We invite you to join us next Wednesday as our series continues with final steps that lead to the cross, Lenten worship at 3.30 and 6.30 p.m. Ladies have prepared a nice Lenten supper for you, and at this time we will offer the table prayer for the Lord's blessing on the food that is prepared for us. The eyes of all wait upon you, Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. God's blessings to you as you follow in the way of your Savior and remain in faith of him.